money all the time. Sparks when feet and preparation combine. The road been right here all this time. But you gotta look with more than your eyes. And the small axe Jesse Ryle representing for I just star mindset. Rich forever. Blessed love, pleasant, good evening, good afternoon, or good morning, if it's morning where the item is. Um, I want to greet the item officially in the divine name of His Imperial Majesty, Emperor Eel Selassie I, the first, Empress Menin the first, Holy Emmanuel I, King Selassie I, Ja, Rastafari. One more day above ground, beautiful viewers and subscribers, as you know, life is our ultimate position. Not no greater than that, no matter what I go on. Zane, so, yeah man, one more day, and you know, it's great for you have the item here. Um, I must say we have a beautiful, um, a beautiful sister on the line, Zane, but we have a beautiful, um, program lineup for the item today. Zin, um, we have we have someone from the not the someone, but we have we have um we have a a, a member of the Ethiopian Royal Federation, you know, with us today. Um, Our Honorable Excellency Black Madonna. Um, I want to introduce her to the mindset program for the first time blessed love honorable empress blessed love blessed love i'm happy to be here warm welcome great for have the eye on the platform yes thank you for having me yes i yeah man it's an honor and a pleasure to have the eye here today with us you know to um you know to give us a little bit more insight and you know some of you know the work that the i do um as a part of the ethiopian royal federation um i know that the i is um a second second president um of the ethiopian mm-hmm. royal federation talk to me about that position first and foremost well um I'm the second vice president of the Ethiopian World Federation headquarters located in Harlem, New York. And um, I'm from New York in 19. I might be one of the one of the younger members, but still not that young anymore. But but um, in 1994, my first husband was a. he was a uh, owner of the Rastafarian Ethiopian Orthodox Church, uh, Nyabingi and Twelve Tribes Church that we had in Cincinnati, Ohio. So he was one of the first um, <clears throat> to open a Rastafarian uh, Orthodox Ethiopian Church in Cincinnati, Ohio. He opened it in 1987. And I met him in 1991 or something like that. And we married 1994. And he brought me to the Bronx for a convention um, in 1994. And um, since then, he's passed away in 2001. But I remember writing the checks for the Ethiopian World Federation as an investment on something that he wanted to do you know mm-hmm. he loved the the culture um he was an elder to me he was about 18 years older than me so i was about 21 when i met him and i just remember writing the checks to invest into the land grant in shashamani at that time he 
he kept telling me about it. He was very excited about it. Um, he would drive to the uh, to the convention and invest into the first roads and to the first schools and things like that. And that's something that you never forget. You know, you never forget that. I remember um, him investing into a gold plaque um, during that time so that we could have our family name inscribed into the tabernacle in 1994. And when uh, fast forward until when the pandemic happened and I had some extra money, he all to be buried in Shashamani. So my goal as his wife and as his administration for for the church was to make sure that whenever I had the money to do it, that I would transfer his body from Cincinnati, Ohio to Shashamani. And that's what he wanted. And so me being the loyal wife that I was and that I still am, I looked into it. You know, I looked into the Ethiopian World Federation. During that time, we were all inside. We couldn't, we were, we had time to think. We had time to organize and strategize our, our plans for greatness. And and I decided that I would take my money and, and look for the uh, Ethiopian World Federation. And, and when I found some of the members that were running some of the international councils a couple of years ago, I was told by one of the leaders of the organization that um, the organization was facing great difficulties um, they needed assistance with uh, taxes, for, uh, making sure that the business was on on point and this and that. And that, of course, is my specialty, doing paperwork and stuff like that. I've okay. been doing for a long time, running my own business. So when I found out they had issues, um, I looked into it and found out that the organization had been revoked by the state attorney in New York City. And being that I'm from New York, I was looking into it and I was told by the state attorney's office what needed to happen in order to get the organization back. And, and after I presented that to several different people of international councils, um, nobody would get back to me. Nobody would get back to me. And that was not a good look for His Majesty's royal organization, which was definitely... Um, established in order to promote humanity through fatherhood and godhood and um this organization is a, a wonderful organization that holds the true values of democracy and um and it also has a very spiritual undertone to it and um and this organization the ethiopian world federation is for all black people mm -hmm. that uh, were basically put before their God and their forefathers into making sure that we can help our people. And that's what this organization is based on, based on being able to assist each other, to set the example of what humanitarianism is. And it's uh, one of the oldest organizations um, dating back to the oldest dynasties in uh, human history. And so when I found out what, I, what was needed to do and I didn't get any cooperation, that's when I basically stepped up and uh, made sure that during the pandemic that every black person had the exemptions that they need in order to save themselves from annihilation, which is in our constitutional right to do. And, um, and I just started working. I just started working. I started um I pulled up our, uh, my ex-husband's old church. I became a minister, and, and um, by me becoming a minister, uh, really just doing administration, but I had to get my ministry in order to write the, the religious exemptions to save uh, people from vaccinations and um, different mandates. Um, also, with all that's going on in Ethiopia, we have a right um, by the, our constitution to protect Ethiopia as black people in this world. We have to come together and protect Ethiopia and protect the sovereignty of Ethiopia, which is constantly jeopardized by different governments. And so our organization is basically established to be able to do that. And I didn't see anyone doing that. And so 
we've been able to make a lot of changes. You know, we've been able to fight a lot of the mandates, a lot of the sanctions on Ethiopia during this time, and a lot of other places in Africa, Mali, um, Malawi, South Africa. Um, we do a lot of paperwork. We process a lot of paperwork to protect the integrity of all Africans. And so that's what our organization is focused on doing. That's what we are doing. And um, we're really happy to be able to have the opportunity to do it. Although a lot of black people don't know much about the Ethiopian World Federation. It's widely been ran by a lot of Rastafarians. And, um, and me, myself, I'm a Rastafarian. But the organization has not been functioning in order to save these people and Africans, refugees. Can, can, um, our our goals stretch a lot. We do a lot for the community. Can, can I ask? Can I ask you a question? Um, can I? Can I? Because sure. you said it was widely run by um, Rastafarian. Um, was was that from the outset? And um, is it? Is it? because it's run widely by rastafarian is is it why it's not um known more to black people as 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 you were saying i would say so um for the past couple of years that our our new international council has been running the organization um we've been getting a lot of phone calls uh from people all over the world, really. Literally, once we made ourselves available and um, started answering the phones and started um, answering the emails from people, uh, we've been told by a lot of a lot of members that they didn't think that they could join the Ethiopian World Federation. A lot of people who are black um, all over the world had been told. Um, and I mean in different parts of the world, some even in Africa, some in the United States, some in the UK, some in Portugal, um, that they couldn't join if they didn't have dreadlocks. They couldn't join unless they were Rastafarian. And maybe some people were told that they couldn't join unless they were from one of the three mansions of Rastafari. Of Rastafari, so so like I mean a lot, so, a lot so, of different so reasons this, why. <laughs> what was this narrative going out by Rastas in 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 the organization? Yes, definitely. Like a, a lot. I, I I don't know exactly names, but a lot of different people from all over the world were very, like very happy to know that they could be a part of this organization. A lot of people knew about the Ethiopian World Federation. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of a lot of people during the pandemic had no place to go to get the exemptions from the vaccine. Um, a lot of people lost hope in the ability to have a choice whether they wanted to be vaccinated because the churches all over the world it was like a it was like they were conspiring not to give people not to give people exemptions. So there were not that many organizations for people who are, let's say, some people in the army, some people in the medical field, some people in the education field that were black, but just didn't have dreadlocks or just weren't Rastafarians. They were like some people are going to different churches. They thought they could get exemptions from their church. They had no they had no option to get vaccine exemptions from their church. So this was actually a good time for a new international council to emerge in order to save those black people that had no place else to go from annihilation and to assist them with the vaccine exemptions that they needed in order to go back to work for their children to go back to school. Um, so yes, it, it was widely told to me from people all over the world that they couldn't be members and they were told by different members that they could not join if they weren't Rastafarian um, they and could not be a member if they didn't have dreads just things like that so so, so in in yeah, the constitution in in the in the in the constitution is it is it saying that um, you have to have dreadlocks to be a member of a farm um, of the Ethiopian World Absolutely Federation. Not. Um, 
No, absolutely just, not. In fact, in fact, in the Constitution, up. it is. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, let me just bring up the Constitution and and, and see what I the membership, the mem the membership of um of the Royal Federation entails. You know, because uh, I, I don't think that you need to have um, dreadlocks. I don't think it say anything um, like well, that. Well, still. no. If you actually go on the on the first page, it states that we, the black people of the world, um, yeah. th there's all types of black people of the world. So, so um, this is another reason why uh, our entire council has not been able to really come forward and speak with all different members. They nominated me to be able to talk to people because this is a this is a sort of uh, discrimination, if you will, that happens that's been happening within this organization. Um, and it's been holding us back really and holding Africa back from growing, holding the Ethiopian World Federation back from growing. It's for all black people of the world. So there are people that don't look the same. You know, there's black people that are all, we come in all shapes, sizes, shades, and all different hairstyles, um, all different religious backgrounds. So it's about unity. And so it states in the preamble that we, the black people of the world, in order to affect unity, solidarity, liberty, freedom, and self-determination, to secure justice and maintain the integrity of Ethiopia is our divine heritage. And so this is um, this is the rule that we live by. And on page three, on page three, it speaks about partisan character. You in section seven it states that nonpartisan character is the is the rule that we live by. So the Ethiopian World Federation Incorporated shall be nonpartisan and non-political in character. So basically that just means that if your religious belief or your political belief stops you from uniting with other black people of the world, you're basically null and void. Your 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 basic uh, membership is not you're not a member of the EWF. Then you might be a member of something else. But it's not the Ethiopian World Federation because that's not um, that's not what we live by, and these are the rules that His Majesty put forth before us. So my thing when I speak with older members and newer members is if we can't pass that barrier of unity and the agreement that all Black people of the world should be unified. I don't usually like to go into the second part of that constitution because right then and there, you've already disqualified yourself from being a member of the Ethiopian World Federation. Because if you're not reaching out, like, like what I do is reach out to people, reach out to older members, look for that unity, look for that brotherhood, look for that fatherhood, look for that godhood. And if I don't get that, it makes it very hard for me to introduce all the rest of the members to each other because that love is just not there. Mm. And it's like when somebody reaches out to you and they tell you, I'm in fear for my life, I'm dying right now. And your job as the Ethiopian World Federation is to save that person from annihilation. And you don't pick up the phone, you're not a member of the Ethiopian World Federation. That is what we live by. When somebody calls you in fear for their life and you're a member, your duty by his majesty's standards and by his majesty's will is to pick up that phone and make sure that you do everything within your power to save that person. And that's what we're about. That's just what we're about. If we don't know how to do it, we ask another member, how can we make this happen? How can we help these people? And we have a wealth of information right here within this new international council. We've crossed the barriers of young and old, where they say there's always a barrier. The young people don't get along with the old people. We have member. We have a council um, that starts at maybe I think about um, late twenties to all the way to sixty-seven. So we all communicate. Now I notice that some of our elder.
Uh, I was just looking at the membership and it's you know it's just saying um the membership shall be comprised of um black people of of the world. You know, so you know it didn't specify that you know you have to have dreadlocks or you have to be a Christian or a Muslim, you know, it just you know saying that black people are the world. So um you know, just reflecting back on what the I was saying earlier when I asked you about, you know, if it's Rastas mm-hmm. that, you know, were telling people that they need to have dreadlocks, you know, that that would sound like something to me, like when the Ethiopian Orthodox Church saying that, you know, if you have locks as Rasta man, you couldn't come in the church, you know, that's, that's, it does sound something Isn't similar. Isn't that something, yeah. Yeah, something. Yeah. And and people who get treated like that, they have a tendency to treat other people like that. It's just basic psychology. And it's just not acceptable. It's not acceptable in the Ethiopian World Federation. It just isn't. I mean, that's like um, if when, when His Majesty opened this organization, I'm quite sure that, you know, he knew about rasta you know rasta during during the cities and stuff like that and um and he also knew all black people were being afflicted during that time that that was a, a very hard time in america and a very hard time a lot of places a lot of segregation going on and that's the same thing you know you're not allowed over here if you're not white it's the same thing and that's something that he was trying to get away from so this was this this was designed for all black people of the world because we didn't have something like you know like the ethiopian world federation um to put us on track with making sure that we are always unified with each other Mm. And that we can always help each other and be self-sustainable. And everything we need to self, to be self-sustainable is right there in that constitution. Yeah. So, um, how, how, how do you see? Do you see that? Because it's stated that all you know, all black people of the world. You you think um it. It should make a difference to like you know different groups of black people you know whether they are you know Muslim or you know they're Christians or they're Rasta you know because I know that today with 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 black people religion seems to separate us in 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 a in a way you know and yeah some people, that's something that we're always fighting about yeah. So I, I don't know if you how, how you see it, you know, if um, people should drop that barrier. Well, I see it. Well, I see it like like this. We have the ability to have different locals, so um, people can open up their local and they can run their local how they want to run their local. Um, our strength comes from our unity. And I know you're probably noticing Babylon is falling down and we are getting unified. So here on this side, we're unifying with a lot of people. I mean, even to me, you know, it takes me as surprised some as surprised sometimes because me being that I was raised like as a Rasta, um, I have to accept all black people of the world. So my best bet is to tell people if they want their own local, they can run their local how they want as long as we have the same principles. And the principles are there. Even for any organization, like if it's a a church, a community center, um, a sovereign nation, um, a beauty salon, like any kind of organization can become a local. Because if you look at what a local is, a local is basically just giving you principles so that you can continue to assist all black people. So you have to have a business office, you know, more than likely you have a president, uh, an assistant, a secretary. Um, you're going to hold meetings. Um, it's just a basic plan for any business, 
like if you have like say if you have your own radio station you're still going to need a president a vice president a treasury department a secretary um you know oh, the, the committees man. are broken down yeah they're broken down and it's like almost like a business plan it's not as you know it's it's easier when you have a headquarters to give you these guidelines and to know um that you're on track and if you need assistance you can always have assistance with your headquarters um but he made sure that he made sure that each organization had some sort of spiritual aspect to it because i believe that he knew about the spiritual war so it only makes sense for you to have if you if you have someone that gets sick in your in your um organization like you have a nurses station even in certain schools you have a nurses station you have a publicity committee an education committee like if you're teaching someone how to do dreadlocks for instance you have an education committee for that you know like it's just a normal business plan and um you have a ways and means committee great somebody to help you um make money you know make money for your local make money for your business information committee these are normal things that help you give you a guideline on business and so you can worry about your own local how you want to run it another person can worry about their own local how they want to run it as long as the principles remain the same and that's how i saw it that's how i see it like it's you know it's new for me to to be able to say wow you know this is really how it is but this is how it is um i don't know much about the muslim religion you know we're supposed to have help all black people of the world this is for for us to unify on the basis of something that we all agree on mm-hmm. we all agree that we need an information com- committee we all agree that we need publicity committee we all agree that we need a way to make money for our our business for our local these are normal things that have been proven to work and they should have been working and they are working now so anything before this is basically it's just in the past it's like starting it's like starting new and fresh and with the with the good energy and with the acceptance of all black people yeah stepping in the right direction you have direction. an auditing committee you have an auditing committee that's the one i want to get to because when you have a public committee that is for the benefit of all people a lot of things should be public you have to show people how you're helping each other when you have a problem with the funds and the money and you want to know where the money is going mm. you have an audit committee so say someone said to me well we want to know well, they are members and they have the right to know what we're doing with our money you know like non-profit organizations the way his majesty established it is like a non-profit organization we are the red cross we are the fire department we are the hospital of course we believe in more um holistic health but <laughs> we are the hospital we we are when when you have organizations that work for the benefit of all people you can easily go to their website and then they can show you this is what we made this is what we spent on this is what we raised and this is where your funds are going where your money is going mm. now that's that's just because we've been in this position to where a lot of questions are unanswered but all the answers are right there in the constitution everything is right there in the constitution and so when people stop using the, the federation for their own personal benefit it becomes the Ethiopian World Federation and it operates for the benefit of all black people it's very simple you can see who is operating for the benefit of all black people you might be able to find the Ethiopian World Federation many different places online but when you call and you can see who's actually there to help and they don't care what you look like they don't care if you're handicapped they don't care what kind of black you are if you're black and you need this assistance you're going to get it and that's what you're going to get from the Ethiopian World Federation yes 
Yes, that's what that's what uh, that's what everybody needs. <laughs> yeah, that's what everybody we needs. Need help. Real. Yeah, everybody needs mm-hmm. help. That is yeah. the reality. Yes, we that's, were based on um when the refugees. You know, we were so, when back then we were supposed to help assist the refugees from the Italian war with His Majesty, and that is something that we're continuing on carrying right now. I'm finding out a lot of information and our council is doing a lot of research on what's happening with refugees. People are getting displaced, not in Ukraine, in Africa. And they have been getting displaced in Africa for a very long time. International Council is supposed to assist these refugees. We have refugees from Sudan, from South Africa, um, from everywhere in Africa and they're not getting the attention that they need and that is another reason why His Majesty established this organization when that Ukraine thing happened there was still war going on in Africa and our people are not getting the assistance that they need and this federation was established on the basis that we can come together and assist our own people. We wouldn't need anybody if we all unified. Now we have members who have space in their home. They would love to help a refugee. A lot of our members, once they come into this new international council, they know their responsibilities and they are living up to their responsibilities daily. And a lot of people are constantly calling us and asking us, what can we do for you today? What can we do? How can we help today? This is the spirit of Ubuntu. And this is the spirit that we need. And this is the spirit that this federation has. And um, and I really believe that without the assistance of all black people, it would have never came to this. It would have never gotten off the ground like how we're getting it off the ground now. We have so many people who have been waiting to reach someone to help. And we're opening our arms. It's like just opening our arms saying, here we are. We need it. We need your assistance. And so many people are coming forward with the ability to assist. And a lot of people are different. You know, people come from all walks of life to the Ethiopian World Federation now. And they know that this council is very supportive of whatever the situation is. So we have, we have um, new people people who have known about it for a long time that want to start locals and um, we have some elder members that are still trying to figure out what what's really going on which I, I don't get it but they like they're they've been there but they've probably seen a lot of things going down the wrong road and you know what stops that the unification of the rest of the black people in the world it's like a mother without a father and a child it's like that you have to come together with your family to 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 get further Mm -hmm. and we need this i think we've been conditioned so much to say we don't need you or i can do it on my own or i can do it by myself that we don't work together enough but i'm finding that through the ethiopian world federation everybody that signs up with us is willing to assist and they're eager to do it They've been just waiting, waiting to be able to assist. And we're finding out that there are refugees who have been refugees in Africa and displaced in Africa for over 10 years. This is new to me. This is not right. This is new to me. I'm talking about Africans who, who have been oppressed within the United Nations. Like they go to run to United Nations. You know what happens when they run to League of Nations. You really expect somebody to help you over there, you know? They didn't help His Majesty, so we have to help ourselves. And these are the abuses of the organization that we have to correct, and that is in our Constitution as well. And every one of us who is a member of the Ethiopian World Federation has a duty to correct these abuses. And when you see something being done, and that's why I thank you for acknowledging this, because... We're doing a lot, and I appreciate your acknowledgement for it. It's like I do it for His Majesty. We do it for for God. 
we do it for his majesty we know that it's a job that has to be done and we do it for him we don't really do it to just say oh we're gonna go you know run around like oh we're running ethiopian world federation no we're doing it to help us to help others and that's what this organization is for so i appreciate you recognizing all that we've been able to do and it's just really by the will of god that we've been able to do this it's really amazing some of the things that we've been able to do we're always surprised at what we're able to do and we regret that we've been we haven't showed up sooner and we would have liked to be able to work together with some of the previous members but we can't stop working we just can't stop working there's people that are needing needing our help every day it's always something new you know citizenship refugees passport assistance um things that can really save people from annihilation food um transportation we help with everything um can 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 the i tell me anything about um the technical mission to africa do you have do you have any information on that um, um yes we've taken a lot of um a lot of a lot of interesting stories from from people members non-members who have repatriated had some unfortunate uh, experiences repatriating going to africa um being uh not taken well um not embraced well i should say mm. um on the continent and um and when i and when i listen to this and when i talk to some people members and non-members about their experience with that i think that it all boils down to something that's pretty simple like i said we're a solution organization so in looking at it and hearing all the stories of uh, uh, repatriating um a lot of people are going and they don't know anybody on the other side or they're not really sure who they're going who exactly they're going to meet and that's where membership comes in so so we've gotten a lot of members who want to repatriate and um who we've assisted to get to Ethiopia, to Ghana, wherever they want to go. Um but through our membership program, it makes it really easy to know who they're going to see. So it's like when you go to a new place, when you go there, you're not really prepared. You don't know what's going to happen to your communication. You don't know the areas in which you'll be able to communicate with your phone, where to go and get a phone when you land. Um simple things like where would you stay? Who would you stay with? Um what will you do to make money while you're over there? I can simplify this for you. Um in 1951, Henry Selassie, I, he wrote a peace treaty, a peace and economic treaty with the United States for high contracting parties which would be the Ethiopian World Federation like organizations and locals. Now this treaty that he wrote was an economic treaty it basically explained how the federation is supposed to operate under the united states law with their relationship with ethiopia so basically it's making sure that we just the name of it to the peace and economic treaty to make sure that you're going on um, there where you can sustain yourself you can do business with somebody in Ethiopia. So through our membership program, we have members who are all over the world. So if there's a member that wants to go to Africa for instance, we will definitely make sure that they are prepared on some level. Now there's members over there who we don't have signed up underneath our system and we don't really know who they are. So if a member decides to go to Ethiopia, to work with or live with a, a a member who is not in our system we can't really protect them knowing who they're going there to work with and that's where membership comes into into um its importance because we're family right we're supposed to know that we have family to go to um where we're going where we're going to be staying we recently been helping people with staying arrangements and everything like that um 
what is available to you to make money there um how you can receive your identification when you get there we have been processing visas processing um exemptions and also connecting people with different missions to go over there and work with different organizations there um and we do have a wide network of people that they can they can um do you know they can get situated some kind of some kind of income when they get there so even now um since we have been protecting the sovereignty of Ethiopia by way of US Congress we've been going in Congress and refuting all of the sanctions they're trying to put on Ethiopia um different sanctions they're trying to put on different parts of Africa now since we've been doing that and being vocal about it Ethiopia has opened up uh, a diaspora services department and that's through the Ethiopian government and they also have $80,000 mortgage loans that we help our members um apply for that are that have no interest rates um a diaspora bank accounts over there now there's three offices where you can get your identification whereas for the past 20 30 years you couldn't even, you couldn't even get that um so we've been working doing what we're supposed to do constitutionally to protect the sovereignty of Ethiopia and to to uh, assist in any way we can um with the laws um stopping some of the the discriminatory laws that are going on in our in our our black people so um Ethiopia I think has been recognizing that and they have been actually opening up a lot of things we can even invest into the GERD now into the the dam that they build over there. We have a we have a procedure where we can open um we can apply for online identifications and we can actually invest into the group which is also a really good opportunity for economically if you want to go to Ethiopia, you can put $100 in there and you get 50%, I think it's like 50% um back on your investment. and that can become a monthly income for you so people no longer have to go there to Ethiopia and struggle mm-hmm. and keep calling back to UK America for money because if they go through the federation and they situate these things properly with the administrative help that we have at headquarters then they can invest and now you and now you're investing now they're not looking at you like why do you have these dreadlocks because people have problems over there in Ethiopia sometimes even today even a couple of weeks ago I was called and they said that they got pulled over and they and the the police were messing with their dreadlocks see these are the things that we need to that would stop all of this sort of treatment because when they know that they have set everything for us to do properly and they know if we're doing it properly and if we are doing it properly there there will be no treatment like that and i truly believe that because when you go to other countries you just can't go to other countries and expect to be treated with respect when you're not bringing anything of value to the community you have to go on a humanitarian and a diplomatic mission because basically his majesty wrote those laws into that peace treaty that we are the true diplomats we are the true nationals and we should be treated like the true diplomats under the laws that he wrote for us in 1951 with that economic treaty it even says there that we are the true national we are the true diplomats so can I, we can have I, to start to carry ourselves as such sorry um pardon me um mm-hmm. can i just ask um from from the organization been set up right and um mm-hmm. people been going back and settling um is it is it just rastas that's been settling under the ethiopian world federation um land grant or is just um other people as black people as well been settling since 
Well, I haven't been to Ethiopia, but from what I've been told, it's really a lot of rosters. It's really a lot of rosters. I mean, I saw a couple of um, a couple of people online. I mean, they don't look like rosters, but they might be rosters. But mostly rosters. Yeah, mostly rosters. Because back in the day, when in, um, when my husband was investing money there, he they were what rosters only. There was no roads. There were rosters only going there, and Rasta who held that down, and Rasta who held that land grant down. And Rasta who running it over there now. Now, I don't know how they feel about all the black people coming over there, but they did not have a problem working with the Aromo. The Aromo people are over there. They came over there and they running it now. So had there been another uh, functioning international council, um, I don't know if all of these things would have happened because it would have been uh, a different a different vibe like we would have made sure that they that it was secured you know people are over there settling settling and i'm not sure if they even have a map of the settlement at this point i, I haven't ever really seen what i've seen something on google but that's about it but these but most of them are definitely rastafarians going over there and and settling and and make and and some just going over there because they're having hardships from wherever they're at and going over there but i'm not sure with how they've been accepted how they've been treated um i get reports every now and then that they're getting put out of their homes people are selling land a lot of things going on that shouldn't be going on just running wild like a lot of things running wild just doing a lot of stuff that they shouldn't even be doing to be honest with you but I mean, if there's a, a local there and they really wanted to get it situated, it would have been situated. It wouldn't be because, like, how can we get this situated? It's all right there in the Constitution, how to do everything. And you're supposed to be communicating with the head. It's like organizations running around without the head. But, yes, it is definitely um, a lot of rosters over there. And um, it's for everybody. Not to mention, let me say this. Now that the organization is getting, you know, getting um, organized and we're strategizing and assisting people, um, a lot of other chiefs from different countries in, in Africa are coming forward and offering land for the diaspora. A lot. I'm talking about from all over the place. We have a queen mother that, that owns a thousand acres in uh, Ghana right now. There's also land that His Majesty left there in Ghana, but I'm not talking about that land. There's more land and there's more chiefs. There's chief in Congo that has a hundred thousand acres for the diaspora. They well, all it, want is it, is it to come underneath true? them. Okay, is it coming under the Ethiopian World Federation? Absolutely. We have a, a one of our council members, he's a chief in Congo, and he has 100,000 acres there that they need, uh, they're, they're, running, they're running pipes for, for water now, you know, and it's definitely coming up underneath the administration of the Ethiopian World Federation without clashing. Like, we, we both have our organization, and we unify like we're supposed to, and they are, and the, the problems that Africa is facing right now could be solved with the diaspora. Africa is rich. Mm -hmm. Africa has everything. There is no reason for our people to be suffering over there. And the, and the, and the division that's been, that's been created is because Africa is rich. Now, I don't know what, who's, who's causing all the division or what they're getting paid to cause all the division, but Africa itself is rich. And without the diaspora, our people will always be oppressed wherever we are, and especially in Africa. If the diaspora would come together and follow under the Ethiopian World Federation rules, the, the, the rules are there of what we need to do everything will start to fall in place even for africa see 
Uh, yeah, see, you see what I'm saying? See what I'm saying? There's, there's, there's so much gold there in Africa that why is every other government going over there and making sure that we remain divided? Because you know what I was told? When you dig for gold in Africa and you turn around, there's more gold. Af right where you dig, there's more gold. It just keeps growing right back. It's like never ending. It will never not be rich. Mm. Never, it will never, never not be rich. And without us uh, really organizing and and uh, running the federation like we're running it properly, even the Africans and the politicians there will not, will not, uh, they were not taking us serious. So now we're being taken serious. Um, we know that uh, we know that this organization was established to to foster our greatness. And that's what that's what we are. We're the center of the solution. We're, we're basically the center of the solution. Um, what 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 is the relationship between um, the Ethiopian World Federation and the um, AU? Well, we don't have a relationship with the African Union. Um, our constitution prohibits the elected officials to be a member of any other political organization and the au once i think it was changed from the organization of african unity mm -hmm. uh to the to the african union yeah it's a totally different name they lost the organization like it's a totally different name they the, the african people do not recognize uh, at all the african union they don't they don't work for the people um, they have not been working for African people, and um, if they had been, there would be no more poverty over there. Interesting. Interesting. So there's 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 no there's no relation. There's no um, no relation. Mm. No relation. We don't really even recognize the African Union at all because if you look at what's been going on. Um, in Africa, the the uh, peacekeepers over there have been abusing the people. Um, the African Union actually works with the European Union, and the African Union actually works with the CDC. And the CDC, we already know, has a depopulation agenda. So there's no way that we can operate with the African Union. What I believe is that the EWF was set up for for the Af in case the African Union was not operating properly, so this is really our organization. The Ethiopian World Federation belongs to all Black people, and we work for the people. Yes, and I had a conversation one time with the African Union, and they don't have, they didn't have at that time months ago, just up to months ago, they didn't have any NGOs. I don't know what they're doing with their money. Hmm. But it's not putting it into the, um, the the black people of the world. So we don't recognize the African Union. We don't work with the African Union. We're two totally different organizations. And um, nobody in New York knows about the African Union. It's just a fact. <laughs> the African people that's, don't that's recognize it. the African Union. <laughs> they don't. We don't know about it. Like, if anything, in Brooklyn, we know more about the Ethiopian World Federation than than um the african union it's just it's non-existent it's not serving its purpose it's just not serving its purpose mm -hmm. so it's all these conflict more while in 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 africa that um you know the year the, they're calling the african union more wild to kind of like um curve certain you know certain behaviors and 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 thing and it, yeah they definitely work with the european union i mean they definitely they even have a website that they collaborated with the cdc and we know that rasta is not collaborating with the cdc i mean rastafarian is uh the basis you know has been the basis of the ewf for a long time and we do respect our elders but we just have to start making sure that all black people know that they can be members also and we have power with that 
we have a lot of power with that. You know, Africa itself can hold um, the entire um, black community, the entire African community all over the world. And we need to start working closer with some of the Pan-Africanists that um, truly appreciate and want the diaspora in Africa because they know that the diaspora is the solution to all of the problems that Africa is facing right now. You know, it's interesting. It's very interesting as a Pan-Africanist. I was, <laughs> uh, I was having a conversation yeah. <laughs> with, um, you know, with someone, you know, who, who is a uh, uh, what is it? Uh, Hebrew Israelite, and you know, she, okay. she was saying to me that you know, Pan Africanism is wrong, and 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 I'm saying seriously. You say it's wrong. <laughs> yeah, Marcus uh, Garvey was a, is a is a pillar of Pan Africanism. <laughs> yeah, this this. Haley Selassie is a pillar of Pan Africanism. <laughs> yeah, the the sister was These saying to me that it was wrong. He works for the AU. <laughs> <laughs> he might work for the AU. You know, you know, you just gotta think about it like that. You know, a lot of people are serving different. You know, they just like people serve different deities. You know, mm. the, the the one thing that we know is that we're all black, and and um, a lot of the problems come from our disunity. So anybody that's preaching disunity. It's not a member. It's not. It's not going with the. It's not going with the um, the go the the goals of the Ethiopian World Federation, which is to bring all Black people together, and that's the main um, meaning of being Pan Africanism is a unifying. Sure. That's like saying, why you don't want to go home to your mother? Why you don't like your mom? <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> it's like, we're not going over there. <laughs> not going to her. <laughs> you came out of her. Why you don't like her? <laughs> like we have to be together. <laughs> we have to be together. Like, like it's too bad. This is a, it's a family. Re it's family reunion time. That's what it is. And those that don't want to, don't. They, they run it in different organizations. It's not the purpose and the mission of uh, and the vision of of His Majesty. Mm. Interesting, still, yeah. Interesting. Um, yeah, I think Africa is calling out for Pan Africans to to they want, you know, they want to bring um, Africans together, you know, and just stop separating us. You know, that's been that's been the main um, reason for our disunity is people coming in and separating us and preaching things that divide us divide and conquer that's been the same goal um from breaking down all of the organizations that will that will give us the freedoms that we that we have as being black on this on this earth together like they people dividing us they just want to keep dividing us and they they've been doing the same strategies to keep us divided and they keep trying the same thing and it, it's been working but it's not, it stops here it stops with the ethiopian world federation so anyone that's preaching anything like that they don't respect the mission and the vision of his majesty's dynasty we're all his children yeah that 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 is um that is for that is for sure yeah we're all his children yeah yeah, that is for sure. Yeah, for all the children. Um, how 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 people in America like you know you know New York is where the headquarters is. Um, yeah. I I I had um sister Ascali, and and the program I think a couple nights ago. Um, she mm. she's someone who have been a part of the you know Ethiopian World Federation for 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 years. Um, she was saying mm -hmm. that uh, office, you know, should have been set up at at the airport in Addis Ababa. Uh, how, how do you see that? An uh, Ethiopian World Federation office should have been set up um, in Addis Ababa. Yes, that is a great idea. I mean, I I thought about this. It was a vision that I had 
for uh, repatriation um, to have some of the Nyabingi at the airport. You know, in Africa, sometimes they welcome uh, some members of the diaspora at sometimes at the airport, greet them, welcome them if they have questions about the area or they need uh, direction to go and see certain things or as and also to move there um assistance with their visas um it has to go through the ethiopian world federation because we have a list of our members we know exactly who they are um they've taken an oath to do the right thing by the organization um our members would know who they're going over there to see um that definitely has to go through the government uh, and we're building uh, rebuilding our relationship now with the government from New York from the headquarters mm -hmm. um, previously I think it was about over 10 years ago there was we had a contract with uh, with the government and um, I'm not sure what happened with that but we're renegotiating that contract and um, and yes, that would be a great idea. That would be a great idea. Um, but unfortunately, we do have some cleaning up to do in Shashamani um, to make sure that our members are there are safe and that they, we know exactly who they're meeting with on the other side. And some of those people just haven't signed up with the New International Council. So we can't really protect each other if we don't know who each other is. So membership is um membership is kind of like with, with members like mama Ascali, she's been a member for so long um i respect her so much as i do some of the other elders uh that have repatriated and been holding it down over there um but our new members would like to know you know who they are um to know that they're protected by the federation um, and so sometimes getting the older members and explaining to them that things were not done properly, uh, a lot of paperwork was lost from the previous councils, um, mm. we have to reestablish it. And that's exactly what we're doing now. We're doing a great job at it. Um, and we're making our system so that we don't ever lose people's information. It's never compromised. It's always private. Um, people have uh, different circumstances from before they go over there. Some may have a job set up, some might not have a job set up. Some may have money for their to build their home, some may not. And we're here to make sure that all of those things are put in order and they're prepared for that repatriation. And so, and making sure that all black people are accepted as well so it's not just rastafarians that can move over there or that can go over there making sure that the mindset of the people over there is one that is welcoming to them one that is safe and that is secure you know a lot of people are, aren't from new york or you know where this is a big city and they're used to you know being in different situations and moving around in different situations so our job is to make sure that they know where they're going they know what they're what they're there for and that they have a mission to do when they get there which is most important to the government there because if you just pack up and go there and you don't have any source of income or you're not bringing value to the community the the respect is the respect is not there that we need to have and that respect comes to the Federation. Yeah, that respect comes to the Federation. Yeah, yeah, man, for real. You need the respect yeah. of the people, you know? Um, yes, you need the respect of the people. Yeah, definitely, definitely. So we have an agriculture program. Um, that's called Purpose Black. That's set up in um, in Ethiopia. Um, 
we also have a, uh, agriculture, a seeding Africa program um, that, uh, that you can learn to grow your own seeds. And we, while we're here, can make the connections to where you can sell your seeds. So you can have your own community garden. Um, we, have, we have a sister that is considering doing a local. It's um, called Seeding Africa. And she builds um, community garden um, seeding farms all over Africa. She's in about five different countries in Africa right now. And we're still growing with that. So that is also another way that even if you, um, if you are repatriating and you have a piece of land or you, or you are affiliated with one of our Seeding Africa programs, mm -hmm. then you can set up your business to where, say you have somebody in the United States that will buy those seeds. And this is something that we need to uh, sustain our food crisis that they say is coming up. <laughs> um, just being prepared for all types of situations like that and making sure that we have options of uh, ways to make money. We have mem members who own schools, who run schools in Ethiopia, whereas if you are knowledgeable about something, you can go there and teach. And you can do all of this through the Federation in different parts of Africa. So um, it's, it's building those types of alliances like that with all black people to where we become strong, where we become powerful. Um, it's interesting you're saying that, and I'm just looking at um, um, the, 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 the technical mission to Africa. I'm just looking at um, where it's saying Ethiopia agricultural and technical assistance um discussion with the assistant ministry our minister of agriculture and official of his ministry revealed that jamaicans for settlement in ethiopia would be more welcome than other people since it is believed that they would make a more lasting contribution to ethiopia in the fields of agriculture you know just because you mentioned agriculture you know i, I was just looking at at that in the mm -hmm. in the technical technical support um well i was told that 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 um with the passports that uh, some of the members have been going to africa traveling on the uk passport or under the united states passport and not getting um, the treatment, the same treatment that Jamaican passport offers. Mm. So we've opened up a passport assistance program to where there are uh, Jamaican citizens who don't have their citizenship yet and need assistance obtaining their citizenship so that when they do go to Africa, they are more accepted because they look at Jamaica like a more of a black you know a black uh country mm -hmm. and they and not coming over there to colonize so we recently opened up the assistance to it to be able to assist um jamaican descendants like um if your parents are jamaican and you've never had a citizenship you're eligible for your citizenship in jamaica and it's a good idea to get your citizenship in jamaica before you repatriate from what they've been telling me so we've been having a lot of members that we've been assisting obtain their jamaican citizenship in order to be treated treated um differently when they go to africa because that's what i've been told like members that have gone to congo and have a uk passport they're not it's like once you hit that border, they don't want to let you over there. They think you're trying to come over there and steal resources or something like that. So it's better, and I heard that you get treated better when you have your Jamaican citizenship. And yeah, there's several ways to go about doing that. Yeah, it's it's it's, and the it's, Federation it's very interesting. It. Sorry, sorry to speak. Mm -hmm. over there. Yeah, it's getting better. It's getting better. <laughs> Yeah, it's just um yeah, I don't know if you, if 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 they have a copy of what I'm looking at right now cuz I've got the No, I want to see it. 
Well, I'll, 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 I'll send it to you via email still. Um, well, another thing that's good about that is that um, there are some there are some Jamaicans that know about holistic holistic health mm-hmm. and and things like that, and um, and Africa needs that right now because of all of these different strains of viruses and vac- strains of vaccines that they keep on coming out with. And, um, and we do, in, in the Jamaican culture, they, we do have a lot to offer in that aspect. Um, and also, some of the people that know about that can, can go there and teach in Ethiopia. We have a member that goes there, he's Jamaican, he goes there and he teaches. And so he's offering, he's bringing value to the community. You know, and by things like that, it's it's changing the way that they they look at us. Besides the fact that we need to unify, we can also teach. We can also take positions like that. Yeah, man, you're very right. You're 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 very right. Cause um, yeah, His Majesty said that you know the Ethiopians and the Jamaicans are, you know, they are they are blood blood brothers and sisters you know so that's like saying you know we are one people yes so it's just interesting to me you know reading from um Mm -hmm. sorry from the um the 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 technical support that you know the assistant minister of agriculture showed a particular interest in the jamaican um coordinate coordinated extension service program and felt that Ethiopia could well model its um, coordinate service on the Jamaican pattern so um, I think what what they what they actually saying there is you know in terms of agriculture um, you, you you know ones from Jamaica um, could could um fit fit into that program very well you know they could that you know they could fit in and one very one of, well yeah one of the things that i've i've heard um over the years you know being being a rastafari and you know talks around the land issue in 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 ethiopia is that um mm-hmm. There haven't been any development agricultural wise and and the land and that's why um some um some of the land was was retrieved by by the Ethiopians. So you know it's just interesting still, you know, just looking at this now. Yes, we have a couple of members that are teaching um some things over there and uh that that purpose black program that uh that has been presented to us about in it's, it's an investment program so basically we have an agreement where we would invest in the ethiopian world federation or individually like say if you have 500 dollars and then you want to move over there you take your 500 dollars, you will put it into uh, an account that I would suggest to go through the federation with so you can keep an eye on it um, and then every three months they they grow they take a piece of land they grow on it they sell it to Ethiopian for, um, grocery stores and then you get a percentage of the profits of what they sell when your when your when your land yields a harvest so so then every three months, you will have some money in your account to spend, um, as well as uh, you can take that same organization and they will show you and teach you how to grow on your land. And then they would buy the food that grows off of your land. So you can still have uh, a source of income. 
And so this is also a, a great program to be a part of. And that's the same thing that we were doing with Seeding Africa. And a lot of people in Jamaica have the green thumb. I mean, I mean, I just learned how to farm, so um, how to how to grow a plant. Like that's not my strong point, you know. But I, I have a lot of cold seasons over here in New York, so that is not that's not going to be my strong point. So we all have strong points in different areas, and agriculture is a big deal. A lot of people need that. Had had the members of the Rastafarian community grew on their land and made those type of deals with the uh, grocery stores and grown on their land and sold and even mailed back some to their family off the continent, they would be looked at like business people. Mm. This is then it turns into a business. And so you're also adding value to Ethiopia and you're saving people by feeding them. And so it all turns down to being able to run a proper business um, proper business, keeping proper um, administration, administrative skills, and that's really what the federation and the headquarters is here for to make sure that the paperwork is in order, um, things are moving smoothly, and everybody is adding value to the continent and making sure that we are going to be received in the future and our children are going to be received with open arms in the future because. They're adding value to the community. Yes, I. For real. Yeah. Yes, everybody has their strong points, you know, and agriculture is so big. I mean, had um, they seen that earlier happening, you know, maybe they we alone could have stopped the food crisis in Ethiopia alone. We just have to start. Putting our differences aside and unifying, uniting. And those that don't, they don't. But those that do, we grow together and we build with each other. And that's really what we have to do. That's what it's all about. That's a very interesting thing. Make sure you send that to me so I can feel it. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. It's uh, very, very interesting. I'll definitely uh, forward it to Mm -hmm. the eye. Um, earlier in, in, in the conversation there I mentioned about um, one's um, having issue with with dreadlocks and, and things like that um, don't want to go off, off off topic or subject still but you know mm-hmm. like Nzinga King for instance um, you know she had her, her locks cut in Jamaica as 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 a rasta um w- would that would that have been something that um uh, the, the the organization would have get in, in involved in oh yes we did get involved with that organization uh, i mean with that with that situation the organization was involved with that we uh contacted that was a while ago um mama bingy contacted us uh and uh, through a mutual a mutual uh, member uh, from Ghana, and he brought her to the federation, and that was a a really touching story. So uh, the council we met together, we decided to take that case and to contact the judge and uh, the lawyers that were dealing with that case. And like I said. Um, about six of us on this council are Rastafari and the others are just black. And so some of these instances that have been happening for years are new to some of us. Um, I mean, I remember going in high school fighting to be able to have my dread and to be able to have my, um, my head wrap on. Um, but apparently these things are still happening in certain places. And a lot of us didn't know that it was still happening, but we did write um we represented uh we represented uh mama bingy and her daughter uh and all the children um she has a lot of children we represented um them in that case and um we spoke with the attorney uh, we spoke with the attorney and we wrote a letter to 
uh, the Jamaican government and also to the judge and um, and I think they tried to change the judge so we contacted both of the judges and basically read them their rights like these people have to be read their rights like seriously they, they've been violating our people for years like generational violations and uh, because of the disunity of the Federation um, and the unwillingness to be able to work together um, we could have avoided these things and so we did we actually we actually contacted them contacted uh, the clerk over there um, a couple of different courts over there and we let everyone know that that human rights violation uh, what they were doing to that young girl you know and um, we have a spiritual council so we do a lot of spiritual work here and so I, I mean I literally saw what happened in that courtroom it was like I was there and I didn't even go there but we did write them we know that they backed down off of that situation um, and I think Mama Bingy wants to still go forward with um, with uh, um, trying to trying to sue them you know, I come from that background. You know, I come from that background. A family of people who have been suing the police, shutting down police stations, um, fighting for our civil rights for a really long time. And so this was like a very easy case for us to deal with. We didn't realize that that uh, in Jamaica that this has been going on for so long. And it's just from simple miscommunication with each other and with our people. And so the connecting of all of us and unifying for one cause to make sure that we are saved from annihilation and that we are seeking justice actively that is definitely something and, and we have legal we have legal representation but we also have a lot of paralegals and people like myself um who are really good at communicating with um, courts, judges, international courts, um, we bring it to the attention of who it needs to be brought to the attention of. And we was able to make sure that that did not happen to her. That oh. was a very clear injustice. There's a lot of injustices that we as a federation should be able to attack our own self. Do you, do you think it's even a bigger injustice when um, like the DDP in Jamaica um ruled that there wasn't um any um how can i put this any any breach of um human rights or um any law broken by 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 the police um the police get off scotch free were you surprised oh what by, on what case on what case is that and and um and zinga that was the ruling from the DDP in Jamaica. They she in the in the first time she went to trial, they said that um, they dropped her charges. I think they dropped her charges. Um, I have to look into it because I was told that they dropped the charges, um, and they won that case. I don't know. I that's the last I heard about it. I have to look into that. You got to send it to me because I have a, a we did a, um, I saw uh, an interview that was done that they won that case. So I have to see what else. It might have been being able to, um, they wanted to sue. I'm not sure if they were able to sue, but I believe that we made a step forward with that, with that case and they dropped the charges. So I have to look back into it. I have to revisit it. Okay. But see, these things like this, they ha we have to stay in communication about. Mm -hmm. Because um, I have the attorney on, on speed dial. Like, this is the thing that we do. We keep in touch with them. We have an attorney on speed dial. I thought that they dropped the charges on that case. I'm not sure if she was able to sue. But I don't know that they got off scotch free. And if they did, and she wants to continue to pursue them not to then that's some more communication that we have to have. She's in one of our groups. I have to ask her. Okay. Yeah, the item seems like... Yeah, those um, are the things that we like to fight. Those are the things we like to fight, those types of charges. 
definitely fighting for the rights of um black african yes. people you know um does, yes. does, i was disappointed to hear about that yeah we <laughs> all we all were you know what i mean because you know rasta is yeah know, we gotta follow up i gotta follow up yeah definitely yeah man but um mm-hmm. b- 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 before we close and things still um what 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 do you think about um i uh, kind of get my question i'll mix, mix up right about now but what 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 do you think of like why 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 the the organization um is 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 just like some light is just shining back on the organization why why you think that is um no why you think that's happening now and it was not visible before well honestly speaking i just think that there might have been some people in the organization that thought that, you know, by being the president of the organization, that they were going to get some type of gift or some type of payment or something selfish. So once you take yourself out of the organization and your selfishness out of the organization, the organization begins to flourish. It's natural. It's really natural. Once you start helping people and doing what the organization is supposed to do, then the light starts to shine back on the organization. It's very simple. Mm. A lot of people want to be the president. I think a lot of people were told that um, they were going to, uh, you know, be able to inherit some type of money or uh something selfish you know honestly speaking um if you are about the ethiopian world federation then you will appreciate being able to assist others appreciate diplomatic missions appreciate the progress of saving black people from annihilation and if you're not for the people then then the, the the organization kind of goes dormant because it's about the uh, selfish reasons. You know, people want to have selfish reasons. If you know, like, say, if I um, supporting uh, the organization, supporting the refugees and making progress, and um, or if I'm not making progress. Say if I'm not making progress and I meet someone that is able to make progress, then the only right thing for me to do is to allow that person to assist and allow that person to make the progress that the organization deserves. Other than that, we've been infiltrated. We had been infiltrated. I think maybe some people were offered money to keep this disunity. I'm just being honest. And those people don't work for the ethiopian world federation they work for the benefit of yourself see the ethiopian world federation is for the people and when you see the progress being done for the people you know that you have found the ethiopian world federation yes i give thanks and um where 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 do you see the um you know, just in closing, where where do you see the organization in you know, in like the next five years from now? Well, I see the organization probably signing government contracts with maybe about five member states in Africa, um, bringing joining with joining with uh, the Pan Africans on the continent that are ready to bring the diaspora home with jobs, with land, with work, with entertainment, with everything involved. And uh, 
and several different member states that are not happy with the way that their their country is being ran, whether it's by another organization or by the president. Um, working with the Ethiopian World Federation until we soon will replace the African Union. And that's just the truth. There's no other better organization to replace for the benefit of the people than the Ethiopian World Federation. Mm. And that starts with one country in Africa at a time. True. We're doing contracts with different countries, different chiefs, different uh different organizations on the continent and off the continent and uh, eventually you know we will be able to get more progress with zero dollars than with a billion dollars because this is definitely a, a, a spiritual war so the progress that we've been able to made, make is not because we have the funds it's because we have the faith Yes, I... that's where it comes from Yes, I. Um, and before you go, um, what 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 background? What 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 background? Um, like, um, you know, more upon a, a school level. You know, you sound like a liar still. Who me? Yeah. <laughs> no, I'm just I'm just a black woman who has dealt with the government way too many times, and I know how to deal with them. <laughs> I know how to deal with them. I know how to deal with my people, you know, um, I'm a priestess, and so my spiritual connection to his majesty is by instruction only. And so um, when I have the conversations with our ancestors, I'm guided by them, and that's it. I'm just guided by them. They stand behind me, and they tell me what to do, and I listen, and I don't care who thinks I'm crazy. The thing is working. The thing is working. And that's all that you need to know. Because the thing is working. There's so many people that we've been able to help with the guidance of His Majesty behind me. Behind this federation. Bringing the right people. Bringing black people from all walks of life who are excited to know that they can be a part of the Ethiopian World Federation. They can assist new members, old members new chiefs so much guidance and so much instruction that i've been given since i've been able to assist and so my background is really as a writer you know when you can when you can effectively communicate with people from all walks of life mm -hmm. and i mean from all walks of life and you can create change and when you have the courage to stand up to your oppressor and you have the faith to know that you've already won this victory, that's where the strength comes. And so it's just not about me knowing the legal system. It's me being able to read through the fine print, me being able to communicate with the governments and the people that are supportive and that assists like we have an international organizer, president, that he was an honorable discharge from the Navy, you know, very militant. And then we have vice president, we have, we have a chaplain that's very spiritual. Like we have a great team. And if it wasn't for the team, I would not be able to present our problems to these governments and create these solutions because the solutions are the solutions are common sense we've been oppressed mm. and and a lot of this a lot of the solutions comes from being able to just speak about effectively speak effectively about the oppression and create the solutions that will work and that is our unity their only defense to keep us down is to continue to create this unity. So uh, with that said, yeah, go we're on, gonna sorry. keep on going. We're gonna keep on going, and we're gonna keep on joining with uh, the, the members um, of our community that are on the continent and the members all over the world. 
And we follow that constitution and continue to protect and seek justice and correct abuses. There's no way we can win. We're just enacting our victories. We're cashing in on our victories. That's all we're doing. We've already won. We're just cashing in on our victories right now. Yes, I. Yeah, I, I, I had one more question, but I think I'm going to leave it. And, Go ahead, and, you can and, ask. And that, <laughs> you and can that ask. still. Yeah, I don't have to You can ask. I know you have a lot of questions because I see you always representing the Ethiopian World Federation. And, and I really appreciate that. You know, they've made it so hard to find us. Uh, some of different members are still struggling for power struggle and really not having the ability to um what do you call it execute execute those solutions that's my talent my talent is in executing the solutions from a spiritual perspective and bringing them into the physical form and so that's really truly my talent of being able to see the spiritual struggle and manifest it through a physical form and so we've got a lot of people that are on our council that have that same talent. We all have that same talent of being able to see it on a spiritual form and, and find a solution and make sure that it gets done. Make sure that those jobs get done. So That's we right. do operate on a global level. So the, the, the services that we provide our international services on a global level. The services that others may provide are local local problems and they got local solutions. But this council has international, we deal with the international problems and we deal with them on a global level. So like if it's a problem going on in South Africa about, uh, you know, about uh, xenophobia or whether it's um, refugee or the laws, basically laws that they make while we're sleeping to oppress us. Mm. Those are the people that we good at dealing with. So this is a mission that it just can't be compromised. You know, it's been compromised for a long time now. It just cannot be compromised anymore. And in the spiritual war that we are living in right now, uh, it's like we ask for the solution and the solution is right there and we and we are able to manifest I mean we 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 address the problem and we get the solutions taken care of and uh, we've been blessed to be able to do that You've it's done. just been amazing it's been amazing it's definitely a mission of his majesty it's not anything that is like a human thing like it, it's it's some superhero shit <laughs> it really is. <laughs> it's a real shit. It really is. Like, and and I'm happy that I'm happy that I'm here to be able to do it because um, our people need it. We deserve it, you know. And we got to get over that fact of not thinking that it can get done. No, it can get done. Yes, people I... say like, oh, we've been oppressed for over 400 years. Okay, but do you think it's gonna go forever? No, the right people have come now. The right people have come forward. Yes, and we thanks. always need more assistance. We always need more assistance. Yes, sir. I truly believe so. But the, I think so, too. And the elders should be really happy that we that they have made it through this law to be able to see this and to be able to assist us. And we need their assistance. We've asked for their assistance to, to present to us some of the problems on our community and allow us the opportunity to be able to assist with it and give us the time so that we can address the situation and stay in communication with us yes i yeah man right there sir for real yes my sister i want to thank the eye for um, yes my brother <laughs> you know, to, for taking the time you know um to reason with the world at large about um what is currently going on um, in the Ethiopia, Ethiopian World Federation. So you know, I want to say manners and so respect. So can I drop the website? Can I drop the website yes, now quickly. so they can find us? Yeah, man, quick. Yeah, man. Yeah, and man. the website is 
www.theethiopianworldfederation.org and also we got another one that is called www.globaldiaspora.org I appreciate you for that yes, they need sir. to find us for real yeah man definitely yes my sister so you know more strength um in the works you know what i mean more blessing okay. more guidance more you know yeah more upliftment yes. you know, more elevation you know what i mean more progress yes. you know in more in, progress yes i in the i works and endeavors you know yeah man more blessing Absolutely. and strength man so we give thank thanks you. thank you yeah man it's been an honor and a pleasure you know what i mean for having the eye on the platform here you know more love and strength it's my, my sister pleasure. yeah sister madonna <laughs> black yes. madonna <laughs> yes I. yes yeah man man as i respect true. my sister yeah man give thanks and yeah we will, we will link soon we sure will all right thank you for having me it's yeah. a blessing yes i peace and love rastafari right. okay peace and love peace Yes, brothers and sister, yeah man, dear the item have it reasoning with um second vice president of the Ethiopian World Federation. Um I think it's one of the headquarters in, in America. Zin. So yeah man, give thanks for our sister to to take it the time, you know what I mean, to yeah explore with us what's you know what's happening and you know what what the work entail you know from from her side you know so we give thanks um reason we do in the comment section and yeah manners and respect peace and love zane rastafari powers and blessing Smash that subscribe see you on the next video i just start the mindset that subscribe button see you on the next video i just thought the mindset